pop right on the bridge of the nose of her opponent. Gave her a quick win. It's interesting that uh, right here, the, the Lady Tiger, Ashley Weekly, says that down the road she wants to be a stunt person, go into acting, be a stunt person. That's kind of interesting. You know, how many people say, ah, what do I want to do for a living? I want to be a stunt person. I like that, though, you yeah. know? Kind of putting it out there. Going to the wall with it. Ashley Weekly is, interestingly, even though she is a young fighter in her career, uh, she is undefeated at 2-0. She's a full-time fighter. And I don't know if she's got the sponsorship dollars to back her or if she's just independently wealthy, but a lot of people don't have the luxury of being a full-time fighter, especially early on in their amateur career. Even a lot of guys that are fighting on the smaller circuit shows professionally still have to hold down a day job, so that way they can have that steady, consistent paycheck. Yeah, I believe she supplements her income with training and that sort of thing, but it's still full-time training at all times. You're working with other people, and, and you're a full-time fighter, and this is great. I'm really looking forward to this fight. Ashley Weekly is five foot eight, so she's going to be a little bit taller than opponent. She's going to enjoy a little bit of a reach advantage. She is also coming off of a 23-second victory in her last outing. So we're seeing a pair of females that needed just 23 seconds to notch victories in their last outing. And I think this fight should be a lot of fun. Ashley Weekly hopes to run through this tournament, obviously, make it to the end, and maybe turn pro in 2011 and fight for strike force. Boy, look at the muscles on her. Uh, she is shredded. That's what I was just thinking, man. She looks like she is in phenomenal shape. After we were just talking about the shape that Emily Peters Kagan is, I mean, Ashley Weekly looks anything but weekly. <laughs> Let's take it up to Jake. Ladies and gentlemen, our next bout is in the 135-pound weight class. Our referee, once again, will be Mark Smith. Introducing first, she fights out of the blue corner. She enters the ring wearing the camouflage trunks. She is unbeaten inside the ropes. Two victories and no losses. Fighting for Jackson's MMA from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Emily Peters Kagan. And across the ring, fighting out of the red corner. She wears the red trunks. Her record, just like her opponent. Two bouts, two victories, and no defeats. Fighting for Team Leo Dalla from Chantilly, Virginia. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Ashley Baby Tiger Weekly. I think it's safe to say that there's not two female fighters currently fighting in the same weight division that both had 23 second knockouts in their last fight. That's a fairly safe assumption. Yeah, this is pretty amazing. Weekly list WEC champion Jose Aldo is her favorite fighter. I'm anxious to see if she can bring some of that unbridled aggression that Aldo does. I was just looking at that. She likes his style. Very strong and confident are the things that she picked out of his style. Curious if uh, she can emulate that. Kagan says in five years, women will be right at the top of the sport. They're on their way now. Peters Kagan comes in looking for the powerful shot earlier. Looks like she wants to take it to the ground with a trip. Probably not a bad idea, but weekly firing off big hooks on, on the inside. Yeah, and Peters Kagan is pushing forward hard. She is looking for that takedown right now, but something about Weekly, the way that she backs up, she's still firing off a lot of offense, which I like. Oh, and nice knee inside by Ashley we Weekly. Another one. Not exactly sure what happened there, why, why time was called. The referee is asking Emily Peters Kagan if she is okay. Referee is saying one warning, so there was a foul of some kind. Not exactly sure what it was. And here we go, back to the action. Emily Peters Kagan in the camo and black trunks. Ashley Weekly in the red trunks. Fires in with a Superman punch and moves into the clinch. Peters Kagan wants to keep it close. Obviously, Weekly has the range, uh, so she can fire from the outside. So Peters Kagan is really trying to press in, but hasn't seen much success yet. Ashley Weekly doing a great job of maintaining her balance, not falling prey to the trip on the inside, and still delivering a few punches. And Ashley Weekly ends up on top. She's got the back of Emily Peters Kagan. She's got the hooks in. She's softening her up. Great flexibility to step over with the left leg and sink in the hooks. Got one hook in anyway. Oh, yeah. Now she'll fall to the back with both of them. Short left hands from behind. Peters Kagan in a lot of trouble here. 
Got about 35 seconds left in round number one. Ashley Weekly is in the red trunk. She is on the top. She's got the back. Weekly's a little high as Peter Kagan stands. She might fall out, and Weekly might be able to, or excuse me, Peter Kagan might slip out the back. Instead, Weekly remains planted on the back. Nice control, just her balance is great. Whether she was on her feet trying to avoid a takedown or even here on the back, it seems like she's got a very nice equilibrium and center to her body. I guess it's from all those core workouts at LA Boxing. Final seconds of round one. A nice one turned in by Ashley Weekly. Emily Peters Kagan pops up a little bit frustrated. Emily early on was the aggressor. She was going for that takedown and Ashley was trying to avoid it. But Ashley uh, really turned it up there towards the second part of round number one. And Ashley's got the, the body type of kind of like a George St. Pierre where she looks really lean. She looks like she's got great balance. And she was all over her opponent. She didn't look like she got tired at all throughout that first round. Emily Peters Kagan looked like she was a little bit frustrated by the way that Ashley was all over her towards the end of that round, although she did do a good job of defending the submission attempts. Yeah, like you said, she came in with an air of confidence after a 23-second win in her last outing and undefeated in her career. Probably isn't used to being, you know, manhandled, so to speak, on the ground. She, she really didn't have much, uh, any, any real bright spots in that round, so surely frustrated. Fortunately, she does have Julie Kedzie over there to, to uh, kind of straighten things out for her a little bit. And she kind of lost her balance how she fell to the ground. She wasn't taken to the ground. Interesting point. Yeah, the the, uh, the takedown game. It still looks like, from the from the looks of it, at least the first round, Emily Peters Kagan was certainly the aggressor, hunting for that takedown more. Whereas Ashley Weekly looks like she's a little more interested in throwing some of those knees to the body. And again, Kagan is going for the trip. Weekly again showing great balance, landing knees, using that height advantage. Coming over the top, bobbing and weaving a little bit, avoiding some of the punches. Nice clarity, nice control. Got to be a frustrating position here for Peters Kagan because she knows she's at a reach disadvantage, so she doesn't necessarily want to strike from the outside. But, you know, moving into the clinch, Ashley Weekly has proven up to the test of maintaining her balance. Another nice knee to the body. You hear the corner of Weekly screaming for more knees. And Peters Kagan appears to be a little bit befuddled right now. She doesn't know exactly know where to try to take this fight because her takedown attempts are being stuffed pretty effectively by Weekly. Weekly is in the red trunks. Peters Kagan in the black in the camo. And there you go. I mean, Peters Kagan does a nice job of turning the corner. Ends up on top. She's got 45 seconds to work from top position and see what she can do. It's going to be tough for her to get the full mount with the right side of the body tucked under the ropes. It's going to be a little difficult for her to work that left leg free and step over. Ashley Weekly doing a good job underneath of tying up her opponent, not allowing Emily Peters Kagan to posture up and land any blows. You know, top position is often rewarded by judges, but there's really nothing here of consequence or of offense from, from the top. Final 10 seconds of round number two. Emily Peters Kagan is going to finish this round on top. Needs to be careful with those punches to the back of the neck there. Interesting round. What do you think, John? You know, I, I guess a judge could see, hey, uh, you know, Emily Peters Kagan was on top there at the end and, and delivering a couple shots, but I, I really thought the round went to Ashley Weekly again. There's not a whole lot in it for sure, but just really more of ring generalship, so to speak, kind of controlling the action, a little more active inside with the knees. I, I'd give the round to Ashley Weekly. Here you see the takedown attempt actually by Ashley Weekly. She was the one going for the, uh, the trip or the judo throw, whatever it was there. Not exactly sure, but um, Emily Peters Kagan ended up on top. But I think that you're right. Just overall, the entire the first part of that round was really owned by Ashley Weekly. What do you think, Chris? I think it might be split right now. I mean, it's possible that it's 1-1. One, one. I, I think it might be. It, it very well could be. Again, Emily Peters Kagan it did set up on top, uh, did get the only dominant position of the round. But, you know, if you don't posture up and land punches, if you don't try anything, I just don't necessarily think that should always be rewarded. Tough to see how the judges are seeing it, but this third and final round could certainly decide it tonight. Emily Peters Kagan in the black and the camo. Ashley Weekly in the red trunks. 
Yeah, and you know, it could be a very close score, like you said. And, and Ashley Weekly, I, I think she's very comfortable in the clinch as well. She should be because she maintains her balance well. She delivers nice knees inside. But if I'm her in corner, I'd say get away. Try to get out of that if you can and pepper from distance because it is tough to see how the judges might be seeing this right now. Yeah, and I'm curious. Um, nice right hand. Very nice right hand. As this fight wears on, is there going to be a change of strategy from Emily Peters Kagan? Because she's been getting bullied a little bit. And any time there's any distance, Ashley Weekly is really opening up and landing pretty effective strikes. Oh, that's oh, a nice, nice right hand. That one rocked Emily Peters Kagan a bit. She's covering up. She's tough. She's going to keep pushing forward and surviving. That definitely stung. And again, that's why I say if I'm Ashley Weekly's corner, get away. You're, you're, you're doing well in the clinch, but I think you'd do so much better from the outside. And Emily does a nice job taking the fight to the ground, trying to neutralize some of the strikes that were coming in from Ashley. Peters Kagan on top. Ashley Weekly slide out to the side a little bit. Pushed up against the ropes. We could have a restart here. Going to move the action to the center of the ring. They were a little tied up over there. Time ticking away. Emily Peters Kagan really in no rush to get this thing restarted, which I think she should be. Final 20 seconds now of our third round. It's in the 135 pound division here at the Tough Enough Fighting Championship. Two undefeated fighters going out of here for the final 10 seconds now. Emily Peters Kagan looking to cross the body, go for the mount. Now she wants to posture up and throw some punches here in the final seconds, but Ashley Weekly is having none of it. She's just locked her down. You know, here's again, the third round, Emily Peters Kagan ends up on top for the last half of the round. You could reward her for that, but if you're a judge, and I understand the positioning is important, but when you don't do anything with that positioning, I don't think you can award the round. I think at the end of the two-minute frame, you've got to take a look at it, step back and say, hey, who would I have rather been in this round? If, if I'm the person in this fight, which fighter would I rather be? And I think Ashley Weekly was the one that looked better, that looked in control. And there's a lot to be said about even fighting from your back, and the judges are starting to see that as, as the judges become more educated in the mixed martial arts. A lot of these guys that I see sitting around this ring tonight, I know for a fact, train, and I love that, uh, because they know what it takes to fight off your back, and you're not necessarily in a position that you don't want to be just because you're on your back and an opponent's on top of you. A lot of times, some fighters are more effective from their back. Yeah, and had Ashley Weekly been able to cross face, kind of posture up a little bit and deliver some more punishment, I think she could have stolen the rounds, but she just never did. Well, the judges have rendered a decision. Time to take it up to Jake Gutierrez. Find out what they thought. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the scorecards in this women's 135-pound weight class bout. The winner by unanimous decision in the red corner, Ashley Baby Tiger Weekly. Ashley Weekly walking away with the win tonight. This is a single elimination tournament, so she is going to advance on in the 135-pound division. John, you got a quick rundown of who our winners are tonight? Yeah, I think that, that's a great semifinal setup. We've got Subi Du Kunanen, Michelle Velovic, Jocelyn Leibar, Ashley Weekly now rounds out that field. They all had great performances tonight. I'm looking forward to seeing the semifinals next month. Man, me too. We've got one more fight for the ladies in the 125-pound division that's coming up in a moment. But up next, we've got two very interesting fights fighters and we will introduce them to you next right here at the tough enough fighting championship we're coming right back to the orleans in las vegas